All right. Well, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Maggie Stripmotter, and I am the adult programming and outreach person here at the McIntosh Memorial Library in Baroqua. And um, today we are going to be talking about the Sherry Butt House um, here in Baroqua. And we have our lovely Veronica here to um, kind of walk us through that and talk a little bit more about that. So if you would please, Veronica, feel free to start that up. All right, well, we're gonna kind of do this as a question and answer kind of um, format here. So um, Veronica, please, where is the Sherry Butt House? So the Sherry Butt House is uh, 795 North Main Street, um, right here in Viroqua. It's across from the Viroqua Family Restaurant, which used to be the old country kitchen. Uh, it's one of Viroqua's oldest homes, and last year it celebrated its sesquicentennial, its 150-year-old uh, anniversary. Wow. So um, it's called the Sherry Butt House because it's named after two former owners, and they were both notable families in Viroqua. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Cyrus M. Butt and his wife Margaret had the house built on their farm in 1870. And that time, it uh, Viroqua was um, farm country. Um, and their daughter Jane sold the farm and the house with all its furnishings to Orbic and Hill the Sherry in 1941. So. Uh, Cyrus Butt had the house built in 1870 and Orbic and Hilda bought it in 1941. Wow, they had been there for quite a while mm -hmm. before they sold it. That's like what? 70 years? Yeah. Yeah, wow. Hold on, I'm gonna let a few people in here as they're joining us. All right, hello everybody. We just started, so welcome. Um, if you do not want your picture shown, this is being recorded. So just leave your um, video off and then um, you should be good. We had just asked the question of where is the Sherry Butt House and Veronica was, sharing where it is and how it used to be farmland, um, actually way back in what, 150 years you said? Mm -hmm, 150 years ago. Yeah, and that it was owned by two different families and that's where the name comes from. Um, two, two notable uh, Vroquians. Yes, and the first family lived there for about 70 years before it was sold um, to the last name Sherry, so. We got the Sherry Butt House. All right, I, I was just listening to you say how it used to be farmland and it's it's really interesting for me, you know, cause Viroqua, all I have seen of Viroqua is kind of how it is today for the most part. And so to imagine right down like the main track that you go through <laughs> used to just not even be there and just be a farm. Like it's yeah, really yeah. interesting to wrap my mind around. All right, so what does the house look like? The house, it's a lovely old house. It's built in the federal colonial style, which was popular at the time because architect has a uh, style like everything else that's popular. And at that time, um, the United States had become a country in 1776 and people who could afford an architect wanted their houses built in a style that resembled the classic styles of Greece and Rome, which were considered the birthplace of democracy and liberty. Uh, they were four square houses, two or three stories high, shutters and pillars, 
and often you'd see a metallic eagle. Um, undoubtedly, the style became popular because of Thomas Jefferson's plantation, uh, Monticello in Virginia, which he designed and built in this style. And an interesting fact, uh, the current nickel has a depiction of Monticello on its reverse side. Did you know that, Maggie? I did not. I didn't either. <laughs> but so the picture on the nickel is Monticello. So, so that's the style uh, that uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Butt had his house built in. I am going to have to take a closer look at the nickel. Yeah. <laughs> that's a have good you have you ever been to uh, Thomas Jefferson's house? I have not. I have not. But I mean, if the Sherry Butt House was kind of in a similar style, I mean, it's got to be beautiful. You know, that's architecture. Amazing. All right. So what do we know about the Lieutenant Colonel Butt, you know, as one of that prominent family here in Viroqua 150 years ago? Cyrus Butt was born in 1833 in Deerfield, Ohio. He moved to Viroqua in 1858, which isn't unusual. There are a lot of uh, uh, immigrants that uh, moved uh, further west. Okay. Um, he was a lawyer, politician, and farmer. He served as district attorney for Vernon County. He served in the 25th Wisconsin Volunteer Infantry Regiment, and that's where he was commissioned as a colonel. In addition, he was very active in the community. He was on the village board of Roqua, he was on the school board, and he was on the board of the local county asylum. Also, he was a state senator from 1860 to 1869. After serving in the Civil War, he came and he built his home here and children. So after the war, um, he was a lawyer and he was known for his public service. Uh, people said he was a progressive thinker at, for the time and he was a step ahead of his time. He died at home in 1921 from a stroke. And after his and his wife's death, the house was left to his daughter, Jane. Wow, he did a lot. <laughs> yes, there, I think the early settlers had to though. I don't think there was a whole lot of people who's, who had the time to step up. And it often seems that the ones that did step up had multiple jobs. <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, you know, I always think of farmers as, you know, having a full-time job you know, in their, at their farm and work. I mean, it's a hard job that you work constantly. So to think he had like, what, like five other jobs almost. Yeah. Other yeah. But of course, <laughs> after your children uh, get old enough to help, I mean, that really helps with the labor. So, and then you can pursue your other interests. So. Very true. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, so then there's the second family after Jane had um, sold the place. So where do the Orbeck and Hilda uh, Sherry enter the story? Orbeck was born in 1896 in a log cabin and his parents were immigrants. Uh, they had built the cabin in 1880. So they were immigrants from Norway. He was one of 11 children. So he went to school so only up to the up eighth grade, and then he had to help on the farm. But uh, in 1917, he enlisted in the military, and he served in World War I. Oh. He married Margaret in 1922, and they purchased his, his family's farm, which was southwest of Europa. They had a herd of 25 cows. So Margaret milked the cows by hand, and when Orbeck was gone on business, uh, he was a cattle dealer, uh, she often hauled the milk, she milked the cows and hauled the milk to the Roqua Co-op Creamery behind a team of horses. So she was quite the, quite the uh, immigrant wife. Very strong mm -hmm. woman. Um, Orbeck always dreamed of having a registered herd of cows because he had a mixed herd when he got started. 
And he was so determined to have registered Brown Swiss that he, in 1924, he purchased his first two registered cattle. And so began the legend of Jane of Vernon. So Orbic Sherry is known internationally for being the breeder of um, Jane of Vernon, uh, the, the very top Brown Swiss cow. So uh, you know what Brown Swiss cows look like, Maggie? I do, yes. Aren't they lovely with their big eyes? They are. Yeah, I always, my husband milked them um, and I milked uh, uh, Holsteins for years and years. But I always wanted Brown Swiss. They were such pretty cows. Yes. So um, Orbic and uh, Margaret had two children, um, or I'm sorry, Hilda, uh, Mary and Orbic Jr. And in 1947, Orbic and Hilda retired from farming and they purchased the Colonel Butt House, which was still a farm. And uh, they purchased it from Jane Butt, who was their daughter, uh, Cyrus and Margaret's daughter. And she sold the house with all the furniture, which included a Rococo Square grand piano and many of the Colonel's war activity. So having never heard of a Rococo Square grand piano, I had to Google it. So have you, Maggie, do you know what a Rococo, Rococo grand square piano is? Uh, not necessarily that in particular. However, like I do know about the Rococo style, so I can kind of imagine it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. It has the fancy curved legs and a lot of ornate trim on it. Yes. So that's what the Rococo, uh, and that's what it looks like, actually. Um, Orbeck and his wife were celebrities in their own right. Orbeck was known nationwide for having bred the most famous brown Swiss cow of all time, Jane of Vernon. And I was telling Maggie before we started that uh, in Viroqua, the school kids talk about Jane. <coughs> uh, Jane was judged to be the queen mother of the breed. Orbeck traveled extensively <coughs> as an international cattle and horse dealer and as a cattle judge. So he went all over the world. Um, Hilda was very active in the community. She was a church leader, a forage leader, and active in many local theater productions. In addition, she was known as a charming hostess and entertained the many international business associates of her husband. So um, Hilda was just as active in her own way as uh, Orbic was. Orbic loved horses. They were his hobby. He bought, trained, and sold many riding horses and working teams of horses. He loved to go on trail rides, and his 30-mile treks were legend. 30 miles, huh? He kept up with his riding into his 80s. He kept in shape by doing chin-ups and was known for a sense of humor and stories. When talking to friends at the local country kitchen, I guess he was a regular visitor um, it, uh, for breakfast at the country kitchen, he would often do a handstand on the counter. <laughs> so uh, we were talking a while back to um, the uh, son of the owner of the country kitchen and he remembers as a young lad, Orbit coming in and uh, he, <laughs> he would do handstands right on the counter. <laughs> he was just such a character. And uh, the son told us that his dad had um, a box of, was it Wheaties that they had the athletes on? I'm not sure. I think it was the Wheaties box, wasn't it? That they had uh, outstanding athletes. Anyway, they, they had a box of Wheaties with Jane of Vernon on it. Wow. And his dad had it in a plexiglass a container <laughs> sitting on his car. So I said, someday maybe he can donate, donate that to the museum. So um, Jane and Vernon was probably the only cow to be on the Wheaties box. <laughs> so uh, Orbic died in 1988 at the age of 91. And Hilda died in 1986 at the age of 91. And um, 
That's when the Vernon County Historic Society purchased the house and its furnishing. Um, the museum has a wonderful website where you can view pictures of the house, its interior, and its former owners. So there's pictures of uh, Lieutenant Colonel Butt and his wife and their daughter, and there's pictures of Orbic and Hilda. And of course, there's a bunch of pictures of Jane and Vernon, the most famous Brownsville cow of all. Yeah, so since Jane had originally sold the house with all of its furniture and then the county museum bought it after um, Orbeck and his wife passed, does that mean that all of that furniture, well, most of that furniture is original to when the yes. house mm -hmm. So if you tour the house, um, yeah, a lot of the furniture is from uh, when Lieutenant Colonel Buck lived there and his wife. So, and, so uh, is that piano there? Yes, and um, the uh, Lieutenant Colonel Butt had a lot of Civil War mementos. Okay. And those are framed and on the vaults also. So, and of course, Orbeck had a lot of uh, uh, certificates uh, concerning Jane and Vernon. Those are also on the walls. So, oh. yeah, it's quite a quite an interesting tour. Yeah, how special that like they still have most if not all of the original furniture i mean there's not many cases you know where that's really true or, or they have to you know make replicas of what it would have looked like but mm -hmm. yeah they have to special. search around for that yeah but uh, they yeah. just stayed in the house and now uh they can give tours of what it looked like you know in the early 1900s so then when is the house open for tours so the house is open every summer weekend okay. from Memorial weekend through Labor Day weekend. So it's open now. It is open from one to five, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, admission is $5. It's free for children under nine. Actually, they should charge children under nine and let the older kids in free. <laughs> <laughs> Who does more damage than a nine-year-old? Uh, the museum is emphasizing self-guided tours this year as a health precaution. And um, on the 4th of July, there's a traditional strawberry shortcake social on the front lawn. So if you've ever driven by the Sherry Butt House on the 4th of July, they have a big, um, they have picnic tables and banners and uh, they always look like they're having a really good time. The community band plays and the house tours. So this year, the staff is doing one-way tours where you'll go in the front door and you'll come out the back. So. Right. Wow. Well, that sounds amazing. Was, so was it, is it this year or was it last year that was like 150 years? I probably could last, do last year was 150 years. Yeah, yeah. okay. So we're kind of making up for that yep. last summer here. Well, awesome. I'm so I, I hope uh, everyone goes to see it. It's certainly an interesting uh, tour. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, um, you know, I'm not sure we're able to answer every question, but if anybody who is has joined us has any questions um, about the Sherry Butt House or what we've kind of said, or maybe even has something to add, um, feel free to do so um, at any point. I can give a minute here or a little less for that opportunity. All right. Um, well, that is amazing. And I can't wait to see about 4th of July myself, you know, just maybe even just driving by. I drive past it every day to come here to work. So um, I'm so glad to know more about it. And I am going to have to look up um, what, what, what's the cow's name? Jane. Jane and Vernon. Oh, Vernon. <laughs> yes, because I didn't get to learn about that in my schooling. So I, I guess in West Salem, they don't think Jane, <clears throat> excuse me, Jane and Vernon is anything special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I can't say I have heard of it before now. So maybe what's special from West Salem that you get? What did you learn in school about West Salem? <laughs> Uh, you know, not a ton. <laughs> I actually learned um, more from my great grandma um, since she grew up there. 
um, and told us all the stories about that. And there are a few um, like famous houses that we did get to tour. So I guess that was where it came in, like the Garland family and, you know, stuff like that. So a little bit different, but kind of along the same lines of those historic homes and kind of how the community comes around it. Um, yeah, and those staple, staple families that kind of brought us to where we are. So that's a really, it's really amazing to hear about the one here in, excuse me, Baroqua. So I appreciate it so much that you came and shared. Um, any final comments or things um, to pass along before we kind of wrap it up here? Um, just, I would urge everyone to tour the house. It's inexpensive and it just, it's just uh, nice to see how people lived in the 1900s and how easy we have it nowadays. <laughs> so you think the great grandparents, how they um, had to heat water to do the laundry and mm -hmm. they didn't have dishwashers, they didn't have refrigerators, they didn't have electric lights. And we really are very fortunate nowadays. Yeah. I mean, I, I love animals, but I'm, I'm not a farmer at heart. So hearing how like it was Hilda had milked the cows, carried the pails, then had to like do all the work to get it to the creamery. Like, I am glad I can go to the store and just buy milk. <laughs> Very glad. So, all right. Well, um, I think that we have come to an end here. I appreciate everybody who came and listened to this talk. I know I learned a ton. Um, granted, I am from a little outside Viroqua, so. <laughs> um, but I am so glad that everybody came and we will hopefully see you all at the next conversations program, which is in a little over a week. So um, everybody have a great rest of their week and weekend and we will see you soon. All right. Thank you and bye-bye.